Good morning, everybody. Meteorologist Robert Spetty here with WesternPacificWeather.com and your Western Pacific and Australian weather update. Currently right around 0600 India or about 21 Zulu for those of you worldwide here. And currently, main topic of discussion at this time is uh, the remnants are starting to wind down here of Tropical Cyclone Arrow or uh, 21S here just south of uh, Timor and kind of drifting off towards the west southwest right now. But as you can see on this IR loop right in here, really getting disorganized. And now that's primarily due to an upper level trough kind of sitting over here over Queensland. Extending off of that, there's an upper level jet that's kind of moving over towards the uh, northern part of Australia here. That's really tearing up the southern flank of this system here. And if we actually zoom in on it, running in the bottom right of this satellite picture here, you can kind of see some of that southern flank really getting tore off here. And also overall lacking much circulation in this. Like it was saying about 48 hours ago, we actually saw some pretty good outer rain bands and inner eye wall starting to form up well. Now it's really not happening and a really lack of steering flow as well. And as it's slowly drifting towards the north, it's losing its overall Coriolis force as well so really not really too much left of this system it's last um, most of its organization still a lot of convection in the middle of it but any rebuilding would be very weak at this time and not really going to see this uh, go up to a uh, severe tropical cyclone strength but as stated though what we are seeing is an upper level jet now this is just showing some of the upper level winds out here all attached to this trough over here over Queensland and extending off that you see all these 50 knot winds basically and all we have 30 to 40 knots extending cross towards west Western Australia. Now this is all that southern flank uh, shearing that I'm talking about right in here just on the southern portion of our tropical cyclone out here. So really that's why we're seeing the system slowly die down. And just another look at it, you actually can see the shear map here, about 20 to 30 knot shear on the southern flank here. If you see anything above 10 to 15 knots, uh, tropical cyclones really do not like that. And it basically just knocks down that warm core vertical structure and just kind of makes it more uh, towards a diagonal structure. Thus the whole process for a system to start to form up really kind of fades out once you see this increase in wind shear. Now you are saying though, oh, well, why do we still have some convection out here? Well, there still is a lot of positive vorticity in the region, uh, basically indicative of upward vertical motion. Thus, you still have a lot of these cumulimbus clouds popping up and still the potential for some rebuilding like I already stated, but nothing that's going to become too severe due to that high amount of wind shear. Thus, here is JTWC's warning on the system today, only expecting a max about 40 gusting up to 50 knots from them today. Basically, also expecting the system to get knocked down over the mountains here of uh, West Timor, but really more or less the the main factor is is that in, increased wind shear but it will drift off towards the west along along the uh, northern periphery of the subtropical ridge centered over australia here before eventually dissipating out here uh, south of indonesia so like i already stated though not really any big impacts of land it is going to increase precipitation here in west to more as it travels over it but nothing more than what you usually see typically in these uh, monsoonal trough rain showers up here but there is the potential for some localized flooding and some of the low lying valleys here but otherwise though basically along the northern coast of Australia not expecting any too much of us uh, any flooding out of the system you still will get some outer rain bands moving through but nothing that would be any more than a, a typical rain shower really not any cyclone strength type stuff here but moving up into the northern hemisphere now the large stationary fronts basically dominating most of the western Pacific here and that's really being the big weather producer right now the interaction between the Asiatic high and the Westpac high in here creating this trough extending all the way from Hainan over Taiwan over Okinawa and south of Honshu here. Now this is really the big weather maker where you do also have an upper level low kind of spinning up here over North Korea. Now that's going to change the winds around here over uh, Honshu here and that's really going to be one of the other big players here as far as radiation fallout out of Fukushima. But for today though we are ex expecting to see some light rain showers along the southern coast here as this low moves off towards the east and then you have this uh, upper level low kind of building in behind that here. And also I want to get into this tropical uh, development down in here basically just to try tropical wave, nothing really uh, typhoonish coming out of the system, but some of the models really do want to pick up on it. Now I do want to show you this model here. Now this is the radiation fallout model. Basically just showing the winds out of the northeast as this low pressure passes down towards the east here. And then by tomorrow on the uh, seven, or on the 18th, you're going to start to see this upper level low start to build in here. And as I said, that's going to shift the winds out of the south. And you start to see this plume move up towards the north here. And then as that passes by, basically a high pressure is going to start to ridge in behind that here. And as you can see, the clockwise rotation around the high pressure, winds will begin to shift out 
out of the northwest again, thus the plume starts to point towards the southeast. So uh, I'll post this link in the bottom of the uh, comments page here, and you can kind of get a gist of what we do out here as far as the radiation fallout, and this is just one of the many, many models out that are, are out there. This one is the ZAM, and basically monitoring the iodine in the atmosphere here. So just one uh, kind of thing just to show as the synoptic situations really do play in how these uh, how these radiation fallouts move around in the atmosphere. But moving towards south, though, as already noted, there is that tropical area down here south of Guam and just west of Plow. What I do want to note on this map here is actually if you look closely at these wind barbs, there's does showing kind of a cyclonic circulation right in here amidst all that convection. ASCAP imagery really not picking up on it. The winds are exceptionally light down here. Do want to note this is south of 10 degrees latitude, but if this convection does work on its way off towards the uh, northwest, there is possibility of a basically a tropical depression might forming up in here over the next several days. Uh, GFS model, one of the models I really like, like using the most, especially when it comes to tropical forecasts, and they've been fairly accurate. Now, in the beginning of the seasons are really not so much because of just the uncertainty, but just showing you one of these models. This is showing this evening of the 18th, all of this convection here. Now, the northern periphery of this convection is going to start to get wrapped up and churned around uh, into this upper level trough farther up to the north, extending off of the stationary front right in here. And actually, if we zoom down right in here, just kind of scroll down, you can start to see that happening here as it gets kind of wrapped up in that uh, stationary front up towards the north here. But the end result, though, is still going to be a lot of convection here around uh, just north of Palau and east of the PI in the Philippine Sea here. And as we continue to scroll down, you start to see that convection is continuing to wrap up. And this is where GFS really starts to want to form up a low rate in here is on the 19th. Again, on the 23rd with all this convection down here. Now, this looks like the more promising day, if anything, was to develop a very weak low. Moving across the southern Philippines here, increasing precipitation throughout much of the area from Mindanao up to the southern part of Luzon right in here. Even could uh, encounter in Manila as well as we start to continue to scroll down. You can see that increase in vorticity in the region there. So you really could see an increase of precipitation throughout much of the PI on the 23rd into the 24th as a weak low starts to develop up here. Now that is very far out though. It's about a week out right now so these models could tend to change but really the big concern is that area of convection with a pretty decent amount of positive vorticity out here south of Guam here. Now one thing I do want to mention though is basically if you follow the streamline analysis most of this will get shot off towards the northeast with the upper level trough right in here in that stationary front at the surface and that's what I was kind of showing on the models here. Some of that it could be left over here and just kind of linger right in this coal rating right here just east of Mindanao and that's where I'm expecting any development to form up later on next week. And lastly, I do want to mention about a 5.2 magnitude earthquake that took place approximately two hours ago around 19 Zulu, uh, pr uh, just about 500 kilometers west of Port Headland. Not too, too many people felt it, only one report along the uh, coast here. So really uh, just not th that big of a significant situation out here. Uh, not too many people felt it in kind of a sparse area up in this region. But just one thing I do want to mention since this is not a very seismic active zone here just off the northwest coast. And also in the northern hemisphere, I don't really want to get into it, but a whole slew of aftershocks up in here around Honshu. But that's all I got for today, everybody. Thank you once again for listening to WesternPacificWeather.com. As usual, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can post them here at the uh, website or also on the YouTube channel. Oh, actually, one more thing here. Uh, I also put a chat room in. You just go under weather chat here and then just basically type in your username and hit connect. Now, most of the time this chat room will be closed up basically due to a lack of trolling. I don't really want to encounter that too much. But nightly, around 12 to 13 Zulu for everybody worldwide here, that would be right around uh, 1900 a local for down south around the uh, Sydney area in Australia and about 2000 India here for everybody up here in the Japan area. I'm going to try to hold nightly chat, specifically Wednesdays and Sundays so everybody can get together and have some communication. And also, if you have any specific questions, for any of the people that work here on the site or any meteorological questions that you kind of want to work with, we can also get those done as well. So just click right there. Also, while I'm at it, make sure you friend us on Facebook or uh, like us actually on the uh, westernpacificweather.com Facebook page as well. Just trying to get some more information and the word out there for the site in general. But that is actually all I have now for today, everybody. Thanks again for listening, and I'll have another update tomorrow. Bye.